Hey everyone, this is Chris, and I was leading lab tonight, and I uh, there were some really good questions about stir talk, and I thought it would be a good idea to go over an example uh, that just shows you what happens in stir talk, because there's some weird things happening in this function, and I'm not sure that um, it really filtered into everyone's brain about how this actually works. Um, and it's, and hopefully this will be helpful for this week's assignment as well. But let me uh, show you what's happening here. Okay, let's use an example. Okay, let's just do the example of, uh, let's do the example of, uh, let's say we had the string uh, red. It's similar to the one we had in, in lab. Red, green, blue. And Remember, there's a zero at the end of that. And I'm going to make it an easy example. I'm just going to say that we're looking for, that we're trying to tokenize this string by the token of the dash. Okay? So what's happening in this program? Well, the first time you call this program, what you pass in is a pointer to the beginning of this function, uh, this string. And then you pass in the delimiters, which in this case are going to be is going to be a string that has the dash in it. Okay, and that's the way it starts out. Now, the first time this function is called, this little variable at the top gets set to null. So p starts out being set to null. But the thing about a static variable is that it remains valid after the function ends, and the next time the function gets called, that variable is still valid. That's how stir talk actually works. This is one of the reasons stir talk is a terrible function is because it's got this static variable in it, which is they are not used very often anymore. Uh, local variables that are declared static remain valid after the function ends so that you can call the function again and get that data back again. It's a little bit odd. But okay, so what are, so let's go through this for to tokenize this whole uh, red, green, blue. Okay, so what's happening? So right now S is pointing at the R. Okay, so that means that S is not equal to null, so it skips over all this, and then we end up down here, and it says S plus equals stir span S with the delimiters. Well, okay, what does this stir span mean? Stir span says count how many letter, how many characters there are that are in this delimiters uh, string, okay, from the beginning of the string. So how many, if we start at R, how many characters do we have to go through before we get one that isn't in dash? Well, zero, <laughs> because the first character, is, there are no characters that are in dash. I guess that's the way I should have said it. How many characters are there that are in, in dash? Zero are in, are in that dash. R is not in the dash. So what happens is S remains pointing at R. So S still points at R after this function. Nothing changes with S after this function, or after this, this line, okay? So if, if D reference S equals null, it doesn't. We're not at the end of the string. So we're not going through this part here. We skip over it. So then what do we do? Now we say we have to change P. And there were some good, the reason I decided, one of the reasons I decided to do this video is because people were asking about P. They said, wait, why are we setting P and returning S? Well, it's very important that P gets set for the next time you call the function, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to say, well, look, P equals S plus, well, the, whatever, whatever, the, whatever S starts at plus some value, pointer arithmetic that we'll talk about on Friday. And it's stir C span now with S in delimiter. So this is the reverse of stir span, which basically says, how many characters do I go until I get to something in the delimiters? Okay, so in this case, how many do I go? I go, there's one, there's two, and there's three, and then the dash has happened, so that's it. So there's three characters. This returns three in this case. Well, what does that mean P points to? If S points here to the R, if I count three more, one, two, three, that's where P gets to point to. P ends up pointing at that dash right there, that delimiter. Okay, all right, now what does it do? It says if P zero, that's the beginning of the string pointed at at P, if the dash there is not equal to the null pointer, which, it's, which it is, it's not equal to that, right? Because it's not, it's a dash. 
then go in here. So we go in here and we say P0 gets set to be the null terminator. So what does it do? This modifies your string right here and it sets that to be a backslash zero. Very important reason it does that, by the way, although it's, again, pretty terrible code in the big picture. It's very clever code, but it, it modifies your string, and I'll show you why in a second, to be a zero there. Okay, and then it increments P. So now P is just a pointer. It just gets incremented to point to the G. Okay, so it points to the G. Now, now it points to the G and P is all set and we do not do this part, okay? And then we return S. What does that mean? It means that we are returning a pointer to this R and that is a valid string red. Why is it a valid string? Because it's a character R, then E, then D, and then a zero, a null terminator. So that's our first character. So we are returning a pointer to R we have modified the string to put that, that zero null terminator in there, and this is a perfectly valid, valid string, and it's the first token. So when we print it out, if we're going to go print it out, R E D backslash zero is the string that gets printed out. Okay, so there's our first token. Now, the next time, let's keep tokenizing this, okay? Well, the next time through, by the way, nothing changes about this string until we call it again. Like, I mean, it's still, the backslash zero still remains there, etc. So now we call the function again. The second time you call a function, the function, I don't know if you notice this in the while loop, what it does is it sets S, you set S to be null. So S is null when this function gets called. So first thing it does, it says if S is null, yep, S is, S is equal to null. It says, oh, well, I'm going to use the information that I saved the last time this function was run, and I'm going to now set S to be pointing to whatever P is pointing to. Well, where's P pointing to? P is pointing to the G. So now S is now going to, I'll just do it from here, S is now going to point to the G. Okay, well, guess what? We're going to do exactly the same logic we did before. We're going to say s plus equals stir span s with the delimiters. Well, that's zero because there are no delimiters starting at g, right? So nothing changes. S stays the same. If s, if we dereference s and it's a null pointer, it's not. So we skip this. And then we go down here and we say, okay, well, now p needs to be updated. So I'm just going to erase this right now because p is going to be updated to what? It's going to be s plus stir c span starting at s, which is the g and all the delimiters. So it's going to say how many characters are there before we get to a delimiter. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're going to add five to the pointer that S is at. S is pointing at the G, and it goes one, two, three, four, five. That's it right there. So guess what? The P ends up pointing to the next delimiter. And then we do the same thing again. We go, if it's not equal to the null terminator, well, it isn't because it's a dash, we then say, okay, we set that to be a null terminator. And then we increment P, and P now ends up pointing at B like that. Okay, and then what do we do? We skip that because that's not true, and then we return S. So the next, so S is now green, and if we printed it out, it would get green when we print out to the screen. Okay, and the, the whole string is that, and it's a legitimate string because it ends with the backslash zero. Hmm. Okay, let's go through this one more time. What are we going to do the next time through the loop? Well, the next time through the loop, we are again going to pass in null because we keep keep going through, and the and the stir talk is now going to be triggered to say, oh, okay, I'm not going. I'm I'm still using the same string. So what happens? We say s equals null. Yes, s equals null. So s is now where p is. So S gets updated to where P is. There we go. Okay, same thing before. We add zero because there's no delimiters starting at the B there. Okay, and it, the S is not equal to the null pointer. So we don't need to do anything else. And then we say P, okay, P equals S plus stir span S delimiters. Well, now how many delimiters, how many, non, how many letters do we get before we get to a delimiter? 
one, two, three, four. So that's gonna add four to S. And so S points here, one, two, three, four. So P is going to change to there. Okay, now P changes to there. And we have, uh, if P is zero is not equal to the, the backslash zero, which it is in this case. So now we're finally doing this and we say now, oh, good, P is now going to be equal to null. And so it's going to reset P to be null and then it's going to return S, okay? And then S is now going to be S is now going to be uh, the blue, and it's a it's a good, perfectly good value, and it prints it out. Okay, all right. What if we call this function again? Let's find out what happens if we call this function again. So now we've got okay, same thing. We pass in null, and as far as our calling function goes, it doesn't know that we're at the end of the string yet, right? I mean, we are. You can tell from p that we're there because p actually. Uh, P actually got changed, by the way. It should erase this when it when it did it. P now get is null, so P is now null when it comes in here. Okay, and it says okay. Uh, now we are going to call it one more time with null and the delimiters. Okay, if S equals null, it is. S equals P. Well, P is now null, so S is now going to be null. If S is null, return null. That's what tells our calling function to remove, uh, that's what's call, telling our, our calling function that we are done with the, with the tokenization. So what are we left with? We are left with, a, we are left with basically three strings. We're left with a string red, a string green, and a string blue that has been cannibalized from the original red dash green dash blue, but those are the three tokens. So we have tokenized this string and that's how stir talk works. Okay, hopefully you found that helpful. And if you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to uh, comment on Ed uh, with your uh, question. All right, take care.